Marcus Conti reporting, and sometimes speed read the morning news. Sometimes I'm 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 torn. I don't I have a bunch of stories. I don't know which one to do, so I do them all. I could do them all at once, or or make five videos on five different stories. And uh, I don't know. Sometimes I just like to. Today I'm just gonna I'm just gonna speed read all four stories right together, and you'll see the commonality in all of them because I think that's where we are historically right now. A lot of the a lot of the news, you know, the, the, the Russia Gate nonsense chasing around the witches, right? and um, and uh, foreign affairs and such, and uh, our economy, it's all it's all entwined, and uh, the elections and such, right? So I'll, I'll just I'm gonna mix them up. So we'll talk about today. We'll talk about the Iran nukes. It seems like Iran has got one cooking in the oven, right? Ready for the ready to deliver the bomb, the bomb, the bomb, the bomb, right? China, China trade war heating up. You got some um, uh, the with the with the telephone company Huawei, Huawei, whatever it's called, and the uh, poison pigs, oh, African swine fever, African swine fever. And I want to sum it up and 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 uh, make my summation uh, uh, at the end with the yellow vest, which of course is the most uh, is the most important subject. The important, most important movement uh, right now in the world, in in my view, right, because it it sheds light on a lot of the hypocrisy uh, throughout the world in our own country and the way we deal with other people. Right? So let's look at uh, let's go. We'll we'll talk about that at the end, but let's talk about quickly. Um, Iran says I, I, uranium enrichment quadrupled <laughs> on pace for weapons grade levels. Uh oh. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. So, so Trump. So they're not even they're not even hiding it now. They're saying it out in the open. We got the bomb. So, do they have the right to? I mean, if you're a defender of the Second Amendment, right, the uh, right to bear arms, right, and uh, right. If you if you're if you're a supporter of that, and you believe that everybody should have the right to bear arms, then you should respect uh, Iran's position also in bearing arms to defend itself, not to bear arms to be aggressive like we are and like the European community is, but to actually have arms to defend oneself. So I believe in that, right? So, so here, you know, and they're, are they under attack from, are they, is there a threat to Iran? Of course there is. Israel breathes down their back. You've got Saudi Arabia, uh, also breathing down their back, all with nuclear weapons. The United States supporting Israel and supporting Saudi Arabia because of the money, right? And because of the you know the the dual citizenship and the the Jew you know Zionist connection, right? All that stuff. I'll talk a lot about that, but it is definitely. I mean, why does why do eighty nine uh, Congress people of Congress have dual citizen citizenship with Israel? Why is that? Why is that? Why is that uh, even a thing? Why could can all of these? And then there's one Muslim, right? The Ilhan Omar and the other Muslim. Oh no no no, oh no no. They were they were born. They were they were all oh, their allies with the with the enemy, the terrorists. Right? But but Israel, no, no problem. Right? So so here's the uh, here's the Iranian guy. You know, checking out his checking out the development of his of his nuclear stuff. He's like, Ooh, he's got the nuclear. He's got his finger on the, on the bomb, on the bomb, on the bomb. Man. So, I think that this here we have, we have the enemies of Islamic Iran are incapable of operation fields, Inca incapable in operation fields. That's not really true, but whatever. That's what this guy's saying. Uh, and have resorted to media warfare because of their fears of Iran military power. Yeah, it's definitely a, a pro, you know a media propaganda scheme. According to Tasnim, and I guess he's a spokesman for for the Tehran, um, we have not quote we have not invaded any country and will not do so, but we will give a crushing response to any aggression by enemies. Here, here. Uh, why, why not? Uh, why not respect their right to defend themselves? Uh, so, you know, we'll see. I mean, if 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 the United States, if Trump is going to be belligerent enough to 
defy Iran of their right to protect themselves against their enemies who have are open vocal enemies uh, uh, Israel and Saudi Arabia and support those enemies of Iran and prevent Iran from defending itself well I think you're 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 setting yourself up for you know a proud people to defend themselves and I'm talking about Iran so let's talk about China. 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 The Chinese. China. They've been ripping us off for so long. The Chinese. Chinese. <laughs> Beijing warns of unwavering resolve in Hawaii fight. Uh, that's the the big uh, the big telephone cell cell company in 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 China. Hawaii. 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 I don't know how you pronounce it. Okay. Accuses Washington of bullying and blackmail. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, as anti-American sloganing reaches an unprecedented level of froth uh, across China, uh, they're they're killing us. They're they the Chinese are propagandizing their people to hate Americans, and hate the say it's an act of war, an act of aggression, for us to to squash Hawaii. Yeah calling for a 90-day 90 90 approval to allow American broadband companies more time to work out Plan B. I don't know what that means. So this is wrong behavior, Chinese. This is wrong behavior. So there will be a necessary response. <laughs> Sang Ming, uh, Chinese envoy in the UN said. Uh, Chinese companies' legitimate rights and interests are being undermined so the Chinese government will not sit idly by. Of course, the Chinese are not going to sit idly by. They're five thousand year old culture. They're not going to stop. They're not going to change, and and right. So look, if the, the problem in China, and, and I've always said this, is that it's not China and the way China does business within their own country. Right? They're entitled to do whatever they want. Right? It's the way we deal with China. It's our problem that we we import. We export all of the work to China. We've done that for years and years and years, right? Corporations, because we've empowered our corporations, monopolies, and oligarchs to, to do business in China for cheap labor and give us our cheap T-shirts and our cheap tel telephones, right? And get cheap everything, right? 99 cent store. Right? That's what's going on, right? So rather than squeeze the people that, that we were doing business with and accusing them of a war, Right, it's clashing with China. Right, it's the corporations here. Right, tax them, tax them, tax them, and 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 hold them, hold them to the to the capital gains tax, so that when they make the money, the money stays here. Right, and it, you want to, you know, you, you you're giving them carte blanche to go and trade abroad. Right, right, that's what that's that's the problem. Right, that's why all the jobs are leaking out overseas because you give them a tax break. They don't pay tax. They hoard the money. Then they take the money and they reinvest it overseas, right? and they they don't pay tax on it. That's it's profitable. It's a profitable business model. Right. But no, let's blame China. It's China's fault, and uh, let's squeeze their cell phones. China has unwavering uh, resolve to defend its illegit its legitimate right and interest. Right. We have been holding on for 5,000 years, Zhang said. Why not another 5,000 years? Um, right, so on Friday, commerce, what happened? Our, our commerce department added Hawaii and dozens of its affiliates to a blacklist that will stop U.S. companies from selling Hawaii equipment. This could be seriously disruptive for Hawaii's business. It could put them out of business, really, is really what's going on. So... So here's the trade war, right? It's all fighting. Even if whoever wins the trade war, right? if U.S. companies win the trade war, so what? It doesn't matter. It's just going to get just as bad in the U.S. for you and me, right? For, for you and I, we're not gonna, nothing's going to change in our life because, because they're just going to take the profits anyway and stick it up their ass. They're not going to reciprocate it. Right? Here's another uh, warning. Xi, the president of uh, Z, president of China, the supreme leader or whatever he is, uh, said said that rare earth export ban is coming. <laughs> uh, so China's going to choke. They're going to choke the U.S. They're not going to lay down and die, right? So you got um, you know, 
You got the uh, treasuries. They're taking treasuries off the uh, off the table. They're 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 combating us with equal tariffs. Right? We tariff them three hundred billion. They tariff tariff us back three hundred billion. Right. And uh, so on and so forth, right? So China's not laying down, but here's another one, right? Back in April of 2018, when the trade war with China was still in the early stages, we explained that among the five nuclear options Beijing has to retaliate against the U.S., one was the block of rare earth exports to the U.S., potentially crippling countless U.S. supply chains that rely on these rare commodities and forcing painful and costly delays in U.S. production as alternative supply pathways had to be implemented. So whatever these these rare rare earth uh, things are, China is now going to hold back on it. See how it's it's tit for tat? And and who who benefits? Who benefits? If the Chinese corporations are going to benefit, maybe the Chinese people, but certainly not the American people. That's my point. No, we don't benefit from any of this shit, really. Right? So let's talk about poison pigs in China. I'm not going to play this video because I just I can't at this point in my life. I don't like to see the suffering of animals. I barely like to look at meat. But ah, you want to fuck? Her? Give me my fucking pork. You fucking ah, come the pork. It's so fucking expensive pork. I my pork. 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 Look at her face. Give me my pork. Pork. Give me my pork. <laughs> There's a pork fucking, it's got a pork up her ass. Right? Chinese pig disease outbreak. Just stick the pig up your ass and get fucking Chinese fucking fever. Right? Chinese pork fever up your ass. Right? Fucking Chinese pig disease outbreak pushes up global pork price. Vegan, ver- vegetarian. This is unfucking healthy, insane chopping up creatures like this and eating them. All right? So African swine fever. Yeah, well, interestingly enough, African swine fever does not harm humans, but is fatal, fatal and spreads quickly amongst pigs. Uh, so, so let me ask you a question. Based on that fact, do you think that China wouldn't sell you a, a, an African swine fever-infected pig, right? If you're going to eat that, be- that, that pig, of course they're going to fucking sell it, right? They'll tell you, oh, no, 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 no. It's not, it's not fatal. It's not fatal. No, you just get a little fever. A little fever, right? Or, or, or it's also a way to spread the spread the virus, right? So if you got poison pig being imported into our country or so wherever, Japan, Taiwan, wherever they're selling this shit, right? Uh, all throughout mainland China, they're spreading the fucking the fever, the pig fever. This is biologically a, re, a way that a species will protect itself, right? If you're gonna kill us, eventually, like mad cow, you know, we're gonna. If you're gonna kill us and eat us, we're gonna eventually poison ourselves and, and kill you, right? Maybe not knowingly, but uh, in, inadvertently. Uh, this is biologic, biology fighting back, fighting back. The pigs are fighting back. Right? Fucking fuck you, pork, fuck, fuck up. Pork, fuck, fuck you, fuck it, pork. Look at the poor pig, man. Poor pig's got red eyeball. African swine fever has ravaged China for six months. Right? So... What's the solution there? Pork, 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 porky lady, pork lady, or or stop killing the pigs and torturing the animals, right? So let's talk about the yellow vest, right? This is this is the this is the story of our time, the rising of the second wave of the French Revolution, or the second time. France is not new to this. This is this is this is what French do. Viva, 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 viva France, viva France, viva France. Yellow vests of France, six months, week 27. I haven't been talking about it because there's nothing really uh, that different about it other than that they're holding strong and that the entire media community, the entire global community, has been silent on it. You don't hear anything. When was the last time you heard, you know, CNN talk about the yellow vests in in France? Now, if, if something happens in Venezuela, the one that we're instigating, Right. If a if a if a an embargo suddenly gets set on fire accidentally, oh no, Venezuela is falling. Venezuela is falling. But when there's when there's millions of French people fighting the oligarchy and trying to hold the oligarchy out, then there's no there's no news about that. Why? Because Venezuela is Venezuela, the uprising, 
the little fabricated uprising in Venezuela and the the organic uprising of the French people are polar opposites. Your media, the media that CNN, MSNBC and such, even Fox, will say to you is that that uprising is uprising, right? One rise is the same as the other rise, and it's simply not true. The French are rising up against the oligarchy, against the establish, establishment, against corporate tyranny. And in, in Venezuela, the uprising is to inst- institute, to implant corporate tyranny, to take over Venezuela, right? They're opposite, right? So the one that says take over the Venezuelan people and and stuff corporate tyranny down their throat, that's the one our media uh, exemplifies and, and talks about, amplifies, right? But the one in in France, where that is a, a an organic uh, resistance to oligarchy that gets no no uh, play whatsoever. So I mean, I've, we've all seen the videos of the the police brutality, the, the police hammering the French people down for simply gathering and marching. Eyeballs are getting knocked out with rubber bullets to the tune of like twenty nine eyeballs gone already. Two people dead, probably more uh, from complications later. I mean, you beat an old person down or you squirt a fire hose up their nose or whatever, you know, whatever they're doing over there, beating the shit out of people. Uh, I I'd imagine that the death toll and, and uh, casualties are much higher. Um, so let's just buy why we should take, learn. The, blah, 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 blah. But why should we take the time to learn more about the yellow vests? The answer is that France has for more than two centuries been the classic model for social innovation. And this unique original social uh, movement has enormous international significance. The Yellow Vests have already succeeded in shattering the capitalist myth of, quote, representative democracy, unquote, in the age of neoliberalism. Liberalism. Their uprising has unmasked the lies and violence of Republican government as well as the duplicity of representative institutions like political parties, bureaucratic unions, and the mainstream media. It's very true, right? Because it's what, what in, 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 in a simple, simplified way, what they're saying is that the rising of the people is in direct, is, is, is showing more power than all of the, the, the uh, orchestrated bureaucracies combined, Right? All the the media, the Macron and his cronies, right, and and it's standing in 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 vile opposition to to uh, to that, right. Uh, the yellow vests represent for the first time in history that a spontaneous, self organized social movement has ever held out for a half a year in spite of repression while retaining its aut- autonomy, resisting corporation, <laughs> whatever. Right, so it's a full it's a, a full scale government repression. They've been they've been holding back full scale government repression and targeted propaganda. So we we must salute the yellow vests. Right, twenty seven weeks of of the pseudo French the new not pseudo but the new French Revolution showing us the way showing us the way to bring down oligarchy. In this country, we still believe in our politicians. That that uh, we're, we're we love we love to to find the, you know, follow the corruption on, on the news, and the Comeys and the McCabe's and the Strokes and the, you know, Lynch and Obama. And on the other side, you got Pompeo and uh, uh, Elliot Abrams and, you know, all the uh, Bolton, Trump, Pence, right? All these fucking really. Mnuchin guys, right, f- facing off each other, picking bar. They got William Barr. Oh, the ace in the hole, fucking William Barr. It's gonna lock up. He's gonna lock everybody up, right? We pay, pay so much attention to that stuff, right? So much attention to the grand rabbit hole, the illusion of cleaning up, cleaning house, right? When when all of this, all this ripoff is going on right under our feet, where corporate, where we think that somehow. By, by defending, by defending one side of the corrupt aisle against the other side of the corrupt aisle, 
that somehow that prosperity or that outcome is going to benefit us in any way. Now, it is the right thing to do to lock up criminals when you catch them, right? But the, the understanding must be that they're all criminals and that the way our government operates is criminal and that there's no consequence to it because they're all involved in the system. Uh, so how do you bring a system down? That's why I say yellow vest is the most important, uh, the the most important uh, of all of the uh, all of the discussion this morning is, uh, you know, Iran has a right to defend itself. Certainly, you know, the the, the pigs have a right to defend themselves. <laughs> all right, fucking China, right? Everybody, everybody should fall in line for the U.S. Right? Everybody should just do as they're told. Right? That's the that's the that's the message that we send out into the world. And, and while you're at it, the people in the United States, fall in line already and vote for, Joe, vote for the fucking shit sandwich, Joe Biden, the shit sandwich that we're serving up, all right, already. Marcus Conti reporting. Kindly become a Patreon of this channel. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Marcus Conti reporting.